Now, almost as soon as, as he discovered the phenomenon of superconductivity, Kamling Onnes was proposing that superconductors could be used to generate high magnetic fields. But his attempts to do this met with a total failure simply because the current densities were far too low. And in the course of doing this, he discovered that in addition to superconductivity only occurring below a certain critical temperature, once you were below that critical temperature, the superconductor could be driven normal if you exceeded a certain critical current. The, the current density, whether a superconductor or for a normal material, J, is equal to current carriers, uh, which are usually taken to be electrons, uh, times the individual charge on the current carrier, times their velocity. The velocity depends upon the electric field. The acceleration is equal to EQ over M, the charge. So if there was an electric field on a superconductor, you can see that the, accelerate, the uh, charge particles, the charge carriers would continue to accelerate. Uh, if they did, then the current would continue to increase. But we know this doesn't happen. We have a steady current. In a superconductor, the electric field E is identically equal to zero. Nevertheless, the same Cameron Onis recognized that besides this beautiful graph, there is another unpleasant dependence of the critical temperature as a function of magnetic field. Transition from a normal metal to a superconductor um, occurs at the transition temperature, which, which is Tc, uh, and that appears, when you do the measurements, with, with a very, very weak magnetic field, it appears to be quite sharp, uh, as, as Kamling Onnes and Holst found right in, back in 1911, as you lower the temperature, in this case with mercury, uh, it has a resistance above 4.1 degrees, and the moment you get below that critical temperature, the resistance disappears entirely. What they hadn't expected to find later, that if you have a magnetic field present, uh, the, trans the transition occurs at lower temperature, and also it occurs abruptly with a, a, a latent heat. Let me try and explain the thermodynamics of this. The entropy of a metal is proportional to the absolute temperature. The superconductor, that, this isn't normal, the superconductor has a transition at Tc and at that transition nothing happens to the entropy but the entropy starts to fall. There's no change in entropy and no latent heat. Latent heat is a measure of the change of entropy of the transition. But now what they found was when you apply a magnetic field, the transition takes place at a lower temperature. The magnetic field present. You're running up a superconducting state like this, but at this point it suddenly decides it can't start it, can't manage anymore. So it goes up there and there's a discontinuity in entropy, and so there's a latent heat of absorption. The specific heat of the metal uh, is the derivative, effectively, the derivative of entropy with temperature. So this is what is called a second-order transition, and that is what's called a first-order transition. Now, the second-order transition marks not a change into something quite different. It marks the beginning of a change. You can say, does not matter. Uh, okay, let's operate without magnetic field. Impossible. Impossible because we need superconductivity to transfer currents and current produce magnetic field. So, namely the phenomenon which we need for which for we need superconductivity kills superconductivity. Honus himself failed to make a connection between the two. It was left to Silsby to point out that the critical current was simply that current which generated the critical field at the surface of the conductor. 
In order to understand what controls current density, we really have to start with the basic phenomenology of the superconductor. It's a very important uh, phenomenon was discovered by Meissner and Oxenfeld in 1933. It consists in com complete expulsion of magnetic field from the bulk superconductor. Thus we see that the existence of the Meissner effect has led to the concept of the penetration depth. 